Well, if you don't know who I am, I'm Julian Garcia. I'm the campus pastor here at our Puyallup campus. Our, uh, our senior pastors, Roger and Tina, I just want to say thank you to them so much. They've provided such an amazing place for us to come as a church and just celebrate Jesus and be together as a family. And it's because of the sacrifice that they paid 21 years ago of just opening this church up in their home that we're able to have a place like this. And three campuses that we, we have currently right now. So right now we're in Puyallup. And right now we're also live at our South Hill campus. Hi, South Hill. We love you. You know, there's two people at South Hill right now that are sitting in the auditorium. You know, you guys are absolutely amazing. Tyler and Katie Minton. They, they are pioneers for what we're doing in our church right now of a thing called growth tracks. And growth tracks are so important for us to understand that we want you to help. We want to help you discover who you are and what God has for your life and the purpose that he has for you. And if you haven't gone through growth tracks yet, you haven't signed up, it's time to get signed up because I'm telling you, it's so important for you to be someone who discovers who you are in Christ, and that you don't just show up to church anymore. We're going to talk about that a little bit today, that you don't just show up to church, that you're not just punching your card and walking out, but that God uses you to further the kingdom for him. And so we thank you guys. The Mintons are amazing. They have pioneered this thing big time. I sat through the class with, with Tyler, and he did an amazing job. So if you're going today, you got, you're in for a special treat. But um, you know, uh, today I get the privilege of, of preaching. <laughs> and this, you know, here's the thing. I'm not Roger. I'm just going to tell you that right now. I am not Roger, Roger Archer. So um, I may not yell or sing or dance. That might not happen. That's who he is. That's what he does. He does a lot of, you know, just, he's Roger. He's special. There's only one. We only need one. Uh, you have me today. But I've been a part of this church for the past 15 years, kind of on and off. Came here in 2004, internship, met my wife, and then I went on to just youth pastor and be a worship pastor at a couple different churches. Um, and then God called us back here three, almost literally three years ago to the date. Uh, we have come back to this place, which we call home. Of Pu- uh, it was Puyallup Foursquare, now Motion Church. But listen. God's got an amazing thing for your life, and I pray that you hear his voice and what he has for you today. Um, if you don't hear anything else that I say today, if you, if you completely tune me out, I pray that you hear this. I want you to know and be known by God. It's so important that we as people know and we are known by God. We need to know who the Father is. We need to know his voice. We need to understand that he is good and that he is our leader and that he will lead us down the right path. And when you get led down the right path, guess what's going to happen? He's going to lead you to good pastures. He's going to be able to feed you the things that you need to get fed so that you're healthy and you can become the person that you are called to be. But if you go down your own path and you don't listen to the good shepherd, guess what? You get lost. And it's so easy to get into a a hiccup fall off a cliff, do things that you are not called to, you're, you're going to put yourself in a position that you are not called to be in. But we need to listen to the, good, the voice of the good shepherd, which is Jesus. I'm going to read this to you real quick. It says, John 10, 1 through 10. I tell you the truth, anyone who sneaks over the wall of, a shep, of the sheepfold, rather than going through the gate, must surely be a thief and a robber. But the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep recognize his voice and come to him. He calls, he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. After he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them, and they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. Those who heard Jesus used this illustration, didn't understand what they meant, what he meant. So he explained to them, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me were thieves and robbers, but the true sheep did not listen to them. Yes, I am the gate. Those who come in through me will be saved. They will come and go freely and will find good pastures. The thief's purpose is to still kill and destroy, and my purpose is is to give them a rich and satisfying life. It's so important that we learn the voice of God so that when when we have to make a decision, we know which path to go down. I'm going to pray. Father, we thank you so much for the word of God that you've given us, God, the Bible, the Holy Bible, so that we can read and take it in and make it a part of who we are, Father. Today, God, I pray that every single person here in Puyallup and up on South Hill, Lord, 
that, God, we will have ears to hear. But, God, it won't just go on deaf ears. We won't just forget what you said. But, Lord, instead, we will make it a part of who we are. And, God, we will learn how to hear your voice and how to live in your will, Jesus. God, we want to be known by you, and we want to know you more. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, does anybody have a smart cell phone? Yeah? Anybody? 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 Two people? Great. There's this thing called Siri. Siri is literally one of the best gifts that Apple has ever given me. Now, they didn't give it to me. I had to pay a lot of money for it. But I paid some good money for Siri because Siri is the personal assistant that I've always needed in my life. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I, can, I tend to forget things a little bit. Uh, I have a short, I have bad short-term memory, right? And so I'm trying to figure out what to do. Or someone says, hey, let's do this, let's do that. I need to write it down. If I don't write it down, if I go to the grocery store and I don't write it down, guess what? I'm not coming back with what we needed to grab because I already forgot. And I'm just going to make it up as I'm there. So I, what I do is I pull out Siri all the time. And I ask her for things. And I'm talking. And I'm, I'm communicating with Siri almost every single day when I'm in my car because I want to be safe. When I want to be a good driver, I hook up to Bluetooth. And I say, hey, Siri, call so-and-so. Hey, Siri. And she's always doing what I need her to do. In fact, she listens to everything that I say. In fact, let's just try this real quick. Hey, Siri, call Brittany Garcia. Just to confirm. You'd like to call Brittany Baby Mama Garcia? Y'all judging me? <laughs> baby Mama. She's my baby mama. What can I say? But listen, she hears everything you say, and every single time I talk to her, she talks back, and she knows exactly what I do. And there's a beautiful thing with technology these days, with her especially. It, I say her like she's a person, but... but there's a thing that she does, and it's so cool. She actually learns the way you say words in your dictation. Because some of us, we say words a little different. I'm from New Mexico. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, some of you guys go, man, that guy has an accent. I don't really feel it. Most people don't feel it, but some people feel like I have an accent. And I say words a little different. Like uh, Alan, there's a name, Ellen. A lot of times I say Ellen, not Alan. I can't even say it. Ellen, Alan. There's a, hard, there's a little bit of difference, but she learns my dictation of what I'm actually saying. And eventually, when I say call Brittany Garcia, she won't say, uh, just to confirm, she's, good, she's going to call her right away. And there's four contacts in my, in my uh, phone book right now that say Brittany. If I were to just say, call Brittany, eventually she'll learn that I mean my wife, not the other Brittany's. Because I say it so much and I always choose the same one. And the way I say it, there's dictation. She's learning everything I say. My daughter goes to school, right? She's in elementary school, going to be in second grade this year. Every morning when we wake up to go to school and we get dressed, as, it's the weirdest, creepiest thing in the world. Creepiest. We get in the car and my phone sends me an update. It'll take you seven minutes to get to Motion Church. I'm like, What? Why does it send me, like it knows where I'm going, it knows what I'm doing. It's taking note on everything that I'm doing and everything that I'm saying. In fact, there's times that I have conversations. Me and my wife, we love Disneyland. We're obsessed. We love, love, love Disneyland. We go all the time. We talk, if we're talking about Disneyland, she's probably listening right now. And later on, when I look at my Instagram, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to see ads for Disneyland. Because she's listening to everything. <laughs> it's the creepiest thing, but it's okay, I'll take it. Or I'll be talking about frozen yogurt, my other favorite thing in the world. Love frozen yogurt with lots of candy. If I'm talking about frozen yogurt, later on I'll scroll through Instagram and guess what again? It'll give me an ad for frozen yogurt. It's the creepiest thing. But I love what this says. The sheep know the voice of the Father. We are the sheep. We are the church. We need to know the voice of our Father, because He wants to lead you right down the right path and where you need to go. And I'm going to tell you this, the more you talk with Him, your, the more that your foundation will be found in Him. The more you have conversation with Him, the more foundation will be, be built inside of you that is of Him. And it's so important that we have a strong foundation and we're able to stand in such a place where we're not building something and it's, and it's getting destroyed. I'm personally in the middle of a couple projects at my house. And uh, I'm not exactly what you call a builder. My grandpa, he was a builder. He was incredible with his hands. This guy, um, well, I'm creative with a computer, but not building things. I'm not very good. It's just not a natural gift. But 
I'm in the middle of these projects, and I really, really need to build the deck in my backyard, like desperately, because I want to have a space where it's not in the grass. I can put a chair out there and just enjoy the liquid sunshine, and I can do everything that I can to just enjoy my backyard, and I really want to do that, and it would be so easy for me to go to Home Depot. I know where all the supplies are at at Home Depot. We redid our house when we first bought it a couple years ago, and I know every single aisle of Home Depot, and if I were to go there, I could buy everything I need. I know I need, I know I need wood, right? I know I need nails. I'll figure it out. It would be so easy for me to get on YouTube and just see what they say and do what they do, and, and, but here's the problem. Because I don't have the right knowledge, and I've never been taught the right thing, I would probably build it a little wrong. And, my, and the problem is, is that three years from now, I would be afraid that I would walk out on my deck and I would fall through. Because I didn't build it the right way. Because I never learned what it means to build the right way. I've never been a builder. It's not, that's not my gifting. It's not who I am. But God's calling us to have a relationship with him in such a way where we build this relationship with him and he becomes our foundation. Now, I want to I challenge, challenge you with something. How much better would it be for you if you involved God in the blueprints of your life? If you involved him with the blueprints of your life, because if you don't and you just get on YouTube and try to make it up, eventually what you build might fall apart because it wasn't done right. But when you involve God with the blueprints, it's going to be done right the first time. You're going to be able to build something that is strong, that is sturdy, that you're going to be able to stand up on no matter what. And I would way rather involve him in my blueprints so I do it right the first time than asking him to come in and help me with my remodel. Because I'd rather have something that is everlasting and lasts forever than having to take something out and stripping myself of everything and everything that I have and having to do a redo in my life. When you involve him in the blueprints, guess what's going to happen? You're going to save yourself from heartache. You're going to save yourself from redos. You're going, to have to, you're going to save yourself from a remodel of your life that you don't need to necessarily have because if you just start it from the very beginning and do it right the first time, he's going to help you. So how do we start hearing the voice of the Lord? Today, I want to help you understand how to hear the voice of the Lord, how to walk in his will. I have a lot of people that I meet with, that I talk with, and a, one of the biggest questions that I get is, how do I know it's the voice of the Lord? How do I follow in his will? How do I know that this is the right direction that I need to go? And it's actually a very simple thing. But we make it so much bigger than it really is. We tend to overthink our situation and where we're at, rather than just stopping slowing down, and listening to the voice of the Lord. I'm going to write this down. Number one, repetition. It's going to take repetition in your life. You need to do it. You need to get in the Word of God every single day of your life. Whether that means you're driving to work and you push play on the Bible app, whether you're waking up an hour early and you're sitting down on your couch downstairs with a candle lit and you have a very intimate setting where you're just getting in, in the word of God and you're talking to Jesus. Whether you're in your car and you turn on worship music and you begin to worship God, it needs to be a daily thing. Your relationship with Jesus must, it must be a daily thing, not a Sunday thing. Not a Saturday thing. A daily thing. When you wake up every single day, he will speak to you. And you know what's going to happen? You're going to learn the voice of the Lord. You're going to learn what he's trying to tell you all this this time. You've been trying and and asking and wondering, what is he going to say? And you're going to realize the voice of the Lord is trying to speak to you this entire time. But it just takes repetition to learn his voice. I have an amazing mom, uh, but I also have a very strong-willed mom. Any mamas? I just appreciate moms. It's just crazy. Moms are crazy. Like, just crazy. Just moms are crazy because they can hear, they can see, and they know everything that's going on. Well, I was I was a good kid, and I was a bad kid at the same exact time. I was a very good kid, very respectful, very loving, caring, but I also made a lot of really bad decisions behind my mama's back, and. I remember, this is, I didn't make a bad decision, I just didn't think. I remember my mom used to always make me, my, my mom is the best cook in the world. Like when she comes into town or I go visit her, it's just like, come on Lord, I'm going to gain 10 pounds this week because you're so good. Enchiladas, 
carne asada, just all this food. And then every morning she makes breakfast burritos. And, and, and you can't say no. If you say no, it's offensive. So don't say no. You just eat it no matter how you feel. And she's got this stuff called green chili. And green, you, nobody knows what green chili is. Green chili is the best thing in the world. And you put it on everything, right? And so my mom would make this food. And uh, so my mom was so good to me. I, I would go to, uh, in junior high, I remember going to junior high, and she didn't really like for me to always buy lunch, so she would make me lunch a lot. Or she would go get me lunch and bring it, because she was so good. And I remember uh, my mom saying, hey, I'm going to bring you lunch today from Twister's. And Twist, it, Twister's is like the, the worst burrito, best but worst burrito you could ever eat in your life. Like, you, after you're done eating it, you feel like you're going to die and you're of a heart attack because it was so good and so fatty at the same time. And so she's like, I'm going to bring you a, tr- a Twister's burrito for lunch, so make sure you come out and meet me in the parking lot, grab your lunch, and then you can go. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, cool, 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 cool. And so what I do is I go to lunch, and I get distracted by everybody. I got, I'm, I'm, I'm a seven on the Enneagram. If you don't know what that is, that means I'm an enthusiast. I love to just be around people in crowds and just have fun and just... And so lunch happens, and everybody's talking, and I'm like, I'm going table to table. What's up, everybody? And we're just hanging out, having a good time. And all, I just forgot that my mom was going to bring me lunch. And I obviously, I wasn't hungry because I wasn't worrying about it. I was probably picking off of everybody's food because that's who I am. I was walking around just grabbing fries from so-and-so and tater tots from so-and-so and a pepperoni. And I'm and like, that, that's just who I am. And all of a sudden, as I'm hanging out with my friends, the lunchroom is super loud. Everyone's talking, having a good time. All of a sudden, I hear this, Julian Ivis Garcia. Now, if you have a mama and she says your middle name, you better stop, listen, and obey. I hear that, and literally, it's, it's, having, it's fun in games. I'm having a good time. Straightened up, oh, no. And I walk over to my mama, and she goes, where were you? I've been waiting for you. I brought you lunch. I've been sitting in the parking lot, and you didn't show up. Where have you been? Oh, I just, I, I don't know. I just was, you know, I was just hanging out with my friends, and I, I for, did you forget that I was bringing you food? I, yeah, I just, I, for, I, I just forgot. I don't know. I'm just coming, I'm, I'm, I'm scared for my life <laughs> at this point because my mama is very strong-willed, and you don't mess with her, okay? But the thing is, is that when you hear a voice that, you, that you've heard the most, the voice that you hear the most is the voice that you will respond to the quickest. No matter how loud it was, no matter what was going on, no matter where I was at in my relationships with my people and what was going on, no matter what's going on, as soon as I heard Julian Ivis Garcia, because I've heard that so many times because I was dumb, I responded quickly and immediately. The voice you hear the most is the voice that you'll respond to the quickest. And I also want to say that if you, if you hear the voice of negativity in your life the most, guess what you're going to become? You're going to become a negative person. If you're always speaking death over your life and death over your friends and death over your parents and death over your kids, guess what's going to happen? You're speaking death, and they're going to believe that over themselves. The voice you hear the most is the voice that you respond to the quickest. The voice you hear the most, I'm going to say it again, is the voice you respond to the quickest. We need to change that around. If you're, if you're somebody who's always speaking death, if you're someone who's always hearing negativity in your life, you need to unplug from those things and plug into the things of God. You need to plug into the word of God and allow him to speak truth into your life. You need to plug into him and allow him to say, no, 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 no. I did not lead you to death. The enemy leads you to death. I lead you to good pastures. I'm going to give you what you need to be successful in everything that you do. Are there any wives in here who have a husband who just doesn't listen? <laughs> don't raise your hands. Don't raise your hands. I don't need you to go home fighting. Uh, hey, South Hill, don't raise your hands. You don't need that. But listen, I know some of y'all can relate to this. There are some wives in here that go, hey, honey, can you go to the store and get me some milk? Uh-huh. Yep. He's a really good husband, right? Oh, he's so sweet. He just loves me so much. He does exactly what I need. He leaves, goes to the store. He gets chips. He gets a card. He writes, I love you so much, baby. You're the best thing that's ever happened to me in my life. XOXO, JJ. Puts it in the card. He's like, man, 
I scored. Maybe get some gum, maybe a steak or a burger. I don't know. He just, he just comes home with all the stuff, and he walks up. He's got groceries in hand. He's just confident, like, yeah, I got this. And he walks up to this girl, and he's like, hey, got you this. She reads it. Oh, honey, you're so sweet. Oh, my gosh. Did you get the milk? I'll be right back. For some of us seasoned people out there who have been around the church for a long time, we get so used to hearing the voice of the Lord, we've gotten so used to getting in the word, we get so used to hearing worship that we forget and we learn to tune out the voice of the Lord and what he has for you. There's so many times that we get used to the voice and what he's trying to say. We come to church, we check the box, we do the same thing over and over, we're repetitive, we are having repetition in our lives, but you get so used to it that you forget to actually listen. And you think you know what he's saying, but you didn't actually listen to what he has for you. Don't be that husband. Listen to your wife. Don't be that Christian. Listen to our God. He has something for you, and he's speaking truth. He's speaking life over you. Continue your repetition, but don't tune him out. Don't get used to it. Make yourself uncomfortable. If you're comfortable and you're living a life that's comfortable, Now's the time to do something different that makes you a little uncomfortable because God's calling you to something bigger than yourself and where you're at right now. Repetition, repetition. James 1, 23 through 25, it says this, For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it's like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, you walk away, and forget what you look like. But if you carefully look into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says, and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. What he's saying is, when you come to church, and you hear the word of God, and you experience love, and joy, and peace, and confidence, and all the things that he has for you, you experience Jesus in such a way where you, see, you feel like you've been set free, and then you walk out these doors, and you immediately unplug from the word of God, and you plug into the negative things of this world, and you begin to wallow in your sorrow, rather than keeping plugged into the things of God and the word that he has for you, guess what's going to happen? You're going to unplug, and you're going to forget who you are, and who God says you are, immediately. We need to remember what God is saying to us. It's just like ABCs. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, M, N, O, P, Q. You know the ABCs. It's a foundation for our language. If you don't know the ABCs, you don't speak our language. You need to know the ABCs. And how do you learn the ABCs? By repetition. By going to school and repeating it over and over and over and over again. To the point where they made a song about it with Dora. And you play it in your car with your kids. And you drive yourself crazy because all you hear is Dora singing, A, B, C, B. And you're like, stop, please. I know the ABCs. But it's so important for us to learn by repetition. By repetition. Has anybody ever seen somebody who has their cell phone and they're walking through the mall and they're just like this? They have no idea that you're even alive. They're just walking up, hey, hey, completely just zoned in to themselves. Well, I want you to check out this video to give me, help me out a little bit. I just, I just so badly want to see this happen. I don't know why. I'm the guy who would pull up my phone and record. <laughs> because 
We live in a selfie generation where we're continually just focusing on ourselves. Just the other day, I was at the store, and me and my, me and my uh, brother-in-law were laughing our heads off because these girls took probably about 100 selfies in the exact same spot, in the exact same position. All they did was like, well, let me take a selfie. They're just constantly just taking this picture and just focus. And I'm literally like probably from here to the front row, and they have no idea that I'm just, I'm literally laughing out loud because it's so funny, and they don't even notice me. Not even a bit. Or do, they just didn't care. That's something that will happen to us when we stay consumed with ourselves. Number two, write this down. Become less self-aware and more God-aware. Now, some of you go, well, I need to be self-aware. I need to know who I am. Yes, you do need to know who you are and what you need to work on. But you need to stop focusing only on yourself and what you think was best for you. And you need to be more aware of what God has for your life. We need to get out of the selfie generation. We need to put God first. But I, I will put him first. I'll put God first 100% after I send this text message. I'll totally put, yeah, 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 I'm going to go to church if this relationship doesn't work out. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, for sure. I'm going to give my whole life to God no matter what because I love him if it works out to my advantage. Me, 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 me. There's a song, let's talk about you, let's talk about I, let's talk about number one, oh, my, oh, my. Let's talk about me. God's saying, hey, come on, let's talk about me. I have something way better for you. The life that I have for you is, is so much better than what's consumed. And if, if the makers of our cell phones are saying, hey, um, there's actually a new update, and we're going to help you see how much t- uh, screen time you've been spending on your phone. If they're saying that, and they're the creators of this thing, if they're saying that, <laughs> there's obviously something wrong with our generation of having these cell phones and being consumed in us and how many likes we get on Instagram or Facebook and the conversations. What is everybody saying? And someone can literally be talking to you and having a conversation with you and your face is just consumed in yourself. We need to become less self-aware and more God-aware. Hmm. You know, I don't know about you, but I love steak. I love steak. Like steak is, is life. It brings life to me. Now imagine, imagine you're somebody, and maybe you're a college student and this is your life because you can't afford the steak, so I get it. But you go to the store and you think about it. You're getting groceries and you have an opportunity to get a steak. But you realize that there's something a little bit easier because you don't want to put in the work. So you look right ahead and there's a little box called Twinkies. And so you reach out, you grab these Twinkies, you go, oh, they're already ready. I can have these for like 20,000 years too and still eat them. This is great. I'm definitely going to stock up on these. So you grab that Twinkie, you open it up, you consume it, you feel full. It might fill you up for the moment, but guess what's going to happen a few hours later? You're going to get super hungry again. You're going to be unfulfilled. You're going to want more and more and more. And some of us walk into church, or we walk into our relationship with Jesus, and we act like it's a Twinkie box, and it's just easy to grab. We take a bite. We feel good for a moment. It fills us up for a moment, and then we wait till the next week, take another Twinkie, fill it up. We have that opportunity to fill ourselves up for a moment. We, take, we walk away. We still feel hungry. We still feel empty. We don't know what's going on. I, I ate a Twinkie. I should feel full. And the next week, we show up again. We do it again over and over and over and over and over and over, and you never feel full. But I'm telling you, God's calling you to not be full. He wants to be, help you be fulfilled. He wants you to be fulfilled in his presence. He wants you to be fulfilled with the steak that he has for your life. But steak takes, it takes time. It takes work. You can't just buy it and eat it right away. I mean, you could. That'd be gross, though. It takes time. You have to take it home. You have to marinate it. You have to let it sit overnight. You have to put it on the barbecue. You have to cook it just right. You have to leave just a little bit of pink because that's the way it's supposed to be. With no, you know what I'm saying? You have to cook it right. You have to take the time and the effort to make something. And anything worth having, I'm telling you right now, anything worth having, it's worth working for. Anything worth having is worth waiting for. And some of us have been sitting here just waiting and waiting and waiting for something to happen in our lives. Number three, write this down. Open the door. Open the door. Some of us have been waiting for years and months, hours, days, for the opportunity that you want in your life. 
You're saying, God, please just open the door for me. Open the door, open the door, open the door, God, open the door. And you're crying out, asking God over and over and over and over and over and over and over to open the door. And nothing happens. And you're still waiting. God, why am I still in the same position? Why am I still waiting? Open the door. And you keep doing it over and over and over. And nothing happens. Revelation 3.20 says this. Look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice, then open the door. I will come in. And we will share a meal together as friends. Those who are victorious will sit with me on the throne. Just as I was victorious and sat with my father on his throne, anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying. Come on, you're not waiting on God. God's waiting on you. That's the misconception. I'm waiting on God. Just waiting on God. Yeah, glory. Just waiting on God. I don't know why he hasn't done anything yet. Because you need to get up and open the door, dummy. It's time to stand up and open the door. But you know what that's going to take? You can't just open the door with an automatic remote. Although I'm sure they have plenty of those these days. You push the button and it opens it up for you. That's great. God's calling you to stand up, physically move, grab the door handle, and open the door for him. Because he's been knocking on your heart for a very long time, waiting for you to stand up and do something. And we've never made it easier for you here at Motion Church. We have an amazing opportunity for you when it comes to Grow Tracks to discover who you are and what God has for your life. We have an amazing opportunity, and it's so easy. I want to encourage you, stand up. Open the door. Some of you guys have been waiting for a miracle in your life, and the only thing that you've been doing is waiting and sitting and waiting and sitting and waiting when God's calling you to stand up, rise up, and become the man or the woman that you were called to be, but it takes physical. It takes you actually actively following and pursuing Jesus every single day. It, it takes you throwing away and getting rid of your old self so, and putting on the, clo the, the, the clothing of Jesus so that you could follow in his ways and follow his footsteps. But you've been waiting. Today's the day. Today's the day where you're going to rise up and you're going to learn that hearing the voice of the Lord and walking in his will means you actually have to do something. That means that you have to actively be in the Word of God. Come on, if you're in this place today, go ahead and close your eyes, bow your heads. We're going to pray for salvation today. I believe that there's a few people in here who need to say yes to Jesus. You haven't said yes to Jesus before. Or maybe you have and you've walked away from Him. And your relationship with Him has died. Today's the day where I'm going to call you back. Jesus has been knocking on your door saying, let me in. Let me in. Let me be the Lord of your life. Let me be the one who leads you and guides you every direction that you can. So if you're in this place and that's you, on the count of three, I want you to raise your hand. I'm going to give you a moment to think and realize who that is. I'm going to give you a moment. But if that's you and you want to say yes to Jesus and invite him into your heart to be the Lord of your life, one, I want you to raise your hand. Two, three. Come on, if that's you, lift up your hands so we can see you and we can pray with you. Yeah, come on, let's put our hands together. South Hill, raise your hand. Even if you're online, raise your hand. If you're online, if you're at South Hill, let's pray this together. The whole church, all together, let's pray this together. Let's say, Father, Father today, today, I give you my heart, give you my heart. I give you my soul, give you my soul, and I give you my mind. I you my and I confess, confess that you are my Lord, you're my Lord. and my Savior. Forgive me of my sin and help me to walk in your path. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on. That's such a good decision that you guys made today. Now, if you're in this place, come on, let's all stand to our feet. If you're in this place, let's do this real quick. Some of you have been waiting for a miracle to happen in your life. Some of you have been wondering why you haven't been moving forward. It's because you haven't opened the door yet. You haven't opened the door to allow the blessing to come in your life. You haven't opened the door to allow God to move and be the ever-present leader of your life. You might have said yes to Jesus. You might have a relationship with Him. 
but your devotions are, are non-existent. You're not getting in the Word. You only worship on the weekends. You're only allowing yourself to be in a place where you experience Jesus one day a week. I'm calling you out, and I'm calling you up that God will help you rise up and become the man and woman that you're called to be, to be somebody who follows after Jesus on a daily basis, where you're not just waiting and waiting and waiting, but you start doing and doing and doing. And in the midst of your doing, you know what's going to happen? Miracles will rise up. I'm telling you, when you actively give yourself to the Lord, He will completely submerge Himself with you. And he will speak truth to you every single day. When you feel down and out, the word of God will come to your mind and you will speak truth over your life. When someone's speaking negative words over you, the truth will come out of your mouth because you know the word of the Lord. But you can never know the word unless you do something about it. You'll never know how to pray unless you start praying. You'll never know how to worship through the storm unless you learn how to worship right now every single day of your life. So if that's you, just put your hands right out in front of you and I'm going to pray for you. Put your hands out right just to receive from the Lord. Lord, we thank you so much for who you are and what you're doing in our lives, God. Help us to be a people and a generation of people who will follow after you passionately, God. That, God, we won't be people who are lazy and are waiting, but, God, we will stand up and do something with what we have. God, help us to follow in your ways. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's sing this out together.